Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. In this video, I am going to show you the lab activity related to the pH metric titration of HCl versus NaOH. And the, in the same experiment, we are also recording the potentiometric values of the titration, right? So let's start with the activity. But before that, I am just showing you the solutions which I have taken for this titration right i am just going to prepare the oxalic acid 0.1 normal and naoh 0.1 normal so for preparing this naoh i have taken 1 gram of naoh in 250 ml and 0.63 gram in 100 ml oxalic acid so these are the solutions which i have prepared this is 0.1 normal I have transferred. I have already prepared these solutions and I standardized the solutions of NaOH and HCl using this oxalic acid. And the detailed lab activity I have shared in my previous video. So if you are really interested how to prepare the solutions and how I have standardized these NaOH and HCl using this oxalic acid. So you can go and check my previous video. I will give you the link in the description box. Right. And now after titration, we get the, the normality of NaOH from this equation. So I just get 0.087 normal NaOH solution, right? So this is the solution which I have taken here for, for potentiometric titration, right? Now the next part is normality of this HCl. So the normality of this HCl as 0.075 normal. You may have a question why not you have prepared one norm, 0.1 normal or more than that. So actually I have prepared 0.1 normal of NaOH and HCl solutions but their normality after standardization what I get is this much right. Normality of HCl is this much and normality of NaOH is this much. So I will take these values for the calculation of the potentiometric results right. So let's start with the lab activity. Now I take 30 ml of this 0.1 normal HCl solution and here is the initial reading of this here for 0 ml means we are not going to add any of the NaOH to this and we are going to take the pH and millivolts reading from the pH meter. Now we are going to add so here you can see the electrode and here we are going to add NaOH solution from the burette and it is kept on the magnetic stirrer this RPM here you can see and now we are adding this NaOH solution from the burette if you have micro burette then it would be better so here I am going to check pH and millivolts or potential readings simultaneously. So here is the reading you can see 1 1 ml we are adding to this and after adding each 1 ml of NaOH we are going to check the pH value and the millivolts value for 9 ml of NaOH and you see the reading is very consistent means no sharp change is observed up to 10 ml here this is 11 ml and at 11 ml also we are getting 1.50 For 14 ml, the reading is 1.624 pH. So we are going to add again for up to 18 ml, we are having only 1 point. So here, this is 269 millivolts. And the pH reading is 2.44. Up to 22 
एम एल ऑफ एन ओ एच हेयर यू कैन सी द रीडिंग इज रीच अप टू टू पॉइंट फाइव वन वेरी स्लो लेटेस्ट चेंज नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू एड जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम एल ऑफ एन ए एच फॉर ईच ऑफ द रीडिंग एंड यू कैन सी द शार्प चेंज फोर पॉइंट टू फाइव एंड हेयर फाइव पॉइंट एट फाइव ऑन एडिंग ईच जीरो पॉइंट फाइव एम एल ऑफ एन ए एच टू द वर्किंग सोल्यूशन और सोल्यूशन ऑफ एच सी एल एंड दिस इज यू कैन सी द रीडिंग इज चेंजिंग अप टू सिक्स वन मोर थिंग विच आई ब्रिंग टू यू नोटिस एट दिस मोमेंट द इलेक्ट्रोड इज वेरी सेंसिटिव एंड इट वुड बी बेटर इफ यू टेक द रीडिंग लाइक वंस यू एड द एन ओ एच यू स्टर द सोल्यूशन एंड देन ऑफ द स्टेरिंग एंड टेक द रीडिंग आफ्टर इट इज सेटल्ड सो हेयर द पोटेंशियल इज आफ्टर सेवन इट इज चेंजेस टू नेगेटिव वन दिस इज नाइन रीडिंग and the potential is minus 121 and the reading now reaches to 9.88 this is 10 point after adding 0.5 ml of nh and now ml after this 10 we are adding 1 ml of naoh so here we are adding 1 ml naoh for readings once it is settled up to 10 so simultaneously we are recording the ph reading as and now the final reading is 33 now the observation table part so i have given few of the readings here but the detailed readings are given in the excel sheet here so here is the serial number and this is the volume of naoh in ml and uh, this is the delta v means change in volume so 2 minus 1 i'll get 1 delta v and here is the ph reading which we have recorded from the ph meter so you can see here these are the readings right so volume and ph meter these two readings which we have recorded from there right now delta ph so delta ph this is just for the derivative graph right so delta ph is this minus this so i get zero this minus this i get this much right and now i have to calculate the v average so v average is what this 2 plus 1 divided by 2 so i'll get 1.5 3 plus 2 5 divided by 2 2.5 ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट फर्दर डेल्टा पी एच डिवाइडेड बाई डेल्टा वी सो दिस इज द डेरीवेटिव ग्राफ एक्चुअली दिस इज फॉर डेरीवेटिव ग्राफ सो फर्स्ट आई टेल यू आई एम जस्ट मेक द ग्राफ बिटवीन दिस एन ए ओ एच एंड पी एच एंड द ग्राफ इज दिस राइट सो हेयर आई एम जस्ट हैविंग द पी एच वैल्यूज ऑन द वाई एक्सिस एंड on the x axis i am having the volume of noh which i have added drop wise in the um, in the beaker for this potentiometric or ph metric titration so this is ph versus noh volume right so i I'll, i'll get this kind of graph after that what i did i have taken this delta ph upon delta v so this is d ph upon dv right versus v average so don't get confused what is v average and what is the delta v so delta v is 2 minus 1 and delta average is 2 plus 1 divided by 2 so we are making the next graph between this v average on the x axis and delta ph upon delta v on the y axis right so the graph is like this so what is the use of doing this actually from this graph we are unable to get the actual equivalence point for this right i'll just tell you how we are going to draw the equivalence point from this and uh, but here we are getting the actual value so here you can see the delta ph divided by delta v 
at the point 23.85 so here these are the values you can see 23.85 is the volume and 14.1 is the pH right so here we I just highlighted this yes this is V average and this is the pH value delta pH upon delta V value here from here right so this is how I'll just get come to know what is the volume at the equivalence point which I have added right so what is the use of doing this I'll tell you in the calculation part and here I'm going to show you the potentiometric graphs so here the here is the e values potential values which we have taken during our titration so here you can see these are the values right these are the positive values and these are the negative values and from here i'll just calculate the delta e this minus this so i get this kind of result so all are in negatives fine and uh, delta e upon delta v delta v you know which i have calculated in my previous slide so here delta E upon delta V values I have get like this so here you can see and now I'm just in the plot between volume versus E so volume versus E E is on the y axis and volume is on the and here is the volume on the x axis since this graph is in positive and negative so the main axis is over here fine so this is how we are getting this and uh, the next part is uh, here delta e upon delta v and v versus v average so from here we get the equivalence point so here this is 23.75 right and so in the previous one it is different and here it is little different fine so here here what is the value 23.85 and here it is the 23.75 it's fine so these are the values which i have get so now i'm again going back to my slides so here this is just for your understanding what i have done and uh, here is the graph of pH versus volume so this is highlighted with yellow color and uh, how we are going to calculate from equivalence point from this graph so here you can see first draw the these tangential lines for this part and this part now divide draw one more line which is which cuts these two lines and passes through this so take the height of this line right height of this line which is here which cuts at the point a and b here and divided it by two so you get in this manner you will get the equivalence point here somewhere here but in this manner there may be some deviations right so next is here delta ph versus delta v which i have shown you in the excel sheet and here is the equivalence point and uh, this equivalence point reading we are getting 23.85 ml right now the observation table for potentiometric titration potential versus volume so here is the potential versus volume and as i shown you in the excel sheet this kind of graph i have get and uh, this is the axis this is the positive part and this is the negative part and at 7 pH we are having the zero value right and these are this graph is for these two readings now I calculated delta E and uh, delta E divided by delta V so this is these are the values and uh, V average as you know so now we are going to plot this delta E upon delta V this is the derivative graph upon V average and from this graph we are getting this well this maxima so in this case also we are going to calculate the maxima in the same manner as we did in case of ph versus NUH, right and uh, these highlights are just because this is from the readings volume versus potential and this is the derivative graph delta e upon delta v versus v average right 
now the volume which we get actually this is 23.75 ml i by mistake written over here and now the calculation part and result so equivalence point which i have taken from the ph versus volume 23.85 ml here so the calculation we are going to do with the help of this normality equation and here in this case how much hcl i have taken so i have taken 30 ml of hcl and the normality of NOH which we have calculated and its volume consumed is 23.85 from pH versus volume graph so this is 23.85 so now we are going to calculate the normality of this HCL and the normality of this HCL is equal to 0.069 normal here and the strength which we are going to calculate for this no HCL so the strength is equal to normality into molecular weight so the strength is this much gram equivalents per liter into 36.5 gram per gram equivalents so in this manner we get strength of this HCL is equal to 2.5185 grams per liter right so this much amount of HCL is actually dissolved in one liter but the error which i got from my titration part and uh, here the volume which i have get from the volumetric titration is this much and uh, here the hcl which we have calculated is this much so i hope this is pretty accurate because here we are visually visualizing this and uh, maybe one or two drops added more in that case or there are several other causes which are responsible for the addition of the errors right like the volume change one or two drop that matters a lot in volumetric titration so and here it is quite accurate so this kind of error which i have observed from my experiment so guys i wish that you should also try to check you should have better hand while you are doing your research right so i hope you find this video helpful if you find this video helpful please like share and subscribe thank you all thanks for watching